Have you ever wanted to take your awesome Illustrator designs and add a little bit of motion to it? Well, today we're gonna pull some Disney princess magic and bring these inanimate objects to life. My name is Imani Larusa. I make two-time Emmy Award-winning motion graphics artist and director. I predominantly make music visuals for artists like Kanye West, Big Sean, Lil Nas X, and more. So I'm always making illustrations or I'm hiring illustrators to design the visuals for these scenes. So today I'm gonna be showing you some tips and tricks on how I turn illustrator designs into really cool animations and After Effects. In this video, you will learn how to analyze and break down a scene to really bring your animation to the next level, converting illustrator files into easy editable layers, and some do's and don'ts that I've learned. Before we begin, make sure you download the project files in the description below so you can follow along. This tutorial is gonna be extremely helpful if you're an illustrator that is looking to animate your designs or if you're collaborating with another illustrator's designs. So let's hop right into step one. For me, this is the most important step when creating an animation that many times is overlooked. I'm a very visual learner, so I always get a pen and paper to just jot down my ideas and how I plan to execute the animation from the design that was created. So the big thing here is learning how to analyze your scene to make it really pop and cohesive. This super awesome, amazing illustration was created by Kevin K.H. Kim. I've worked with him so many times and he's absolutely a phenomenal worker and he was gracious enough to provide us this illustration as an example. So if you guys end up using this illustration, definitely tag him. He's super awesome and he deserves all the flowers he could get. My first initial idea when looking at this character is maybe giving him a thumbs up. So I'm gonna write down on my paper, robot gives thumbs up. But now that I have that down, what does that mean for the scene? If a robot gives the thumbs up, then that must mean that his arm moves. And if his arm moves, then his shoulder must move. And if his shoulder moves, then this little character on his shoulder would move too. The goal here is to really break down the movement, understanding the cause and effect before you even start animating. There's so many elements to this that could really take this design to the next level, but if we aren't connecting the motions together, it's really not gonna look like a cohesive piece. Once I have my character animation written down, I also wanna break down the environment. I think environment and animations are so underrated and I've seen so many pieces that could have been taken to the next level had the environment been and as beautiful flowing as the character animation. For me, it's super important to have this written down on a piece of paper because one, I won't forget what I'm doing, and two, I have a game plan so I can start coming up with a reasonable timeline for how long it's gonna take to animate. And this is super important, especially when you're working with clients, they always need to know how long it's gonna take. Step two, importing your design into After Effects to animate. So I wanna show you two different ways. One that's a process that's just within After Effects and the second one, which is a really cool plugin that I purchase and use regularly. First, let's make sure that when you're in Illustrator, all your files are organized. This is going to be extremely important for when you're bringing in the files to After Effects. And thanks to Kevin, all of these files are compressed. So I'm just going to save this Illustrator file so that we can import it into After Effects. So next we're going to import the file by going to File, Import, File. Go to the School of Motion tutorial folder and your illustration will be in the Illustrator folder. And we're going to import this in as a composition instead of the footage because we want to have the layers separated and not merged together in one piece. Hit OK. And now when we click in this composition, the way that our format is laid out is the same way that we separated and compressed the files in Illustrator. So I'm just going to organize and put these where they need to be. So to really get the full experience of animating these Illustrator files, we want to convert these over to shape layers so we have more control of the animations. First, I wanna go in and label all of these. So I'm gonna right click on one of these layers, go down to create and create shapes from vector layer. And as you can see, there's now two files that are labeled guy center and robot. We have our original illustrator file and now we have the shape layer file. Typically I just delete the illustrator file. And now when I go inside the contents, all of the assets are separated in its own group. 
I had mentioned before that your Illustrator layers should be organized and kind of put within its own layer because you will now have the ability to highlight all of the paths and animate them at the same time because they're on the same layer. So if you had different layers for each individual asset, so say I had this character's hair and hat and they were all on separate layers, then I wouldn't be able to highlight all of the paths and animate them at the same time. I would be able to use the transform settings, but I wouldn't be able to animate the paths on all of these different layers. So now I'm just gonna to convert the rest of these over to shape layers. And here's where the fun part happens. We need to go in and label all of our layers. I already took the liberty to label all the files for you, but when you are working on your own designs, it's super important to make sure that you label all your groups in your shape layers. So next I'm gonna show you another great tool and it's created by Battleaxe. So this plugin is called Overlord and it allows you to import shape layers with just a click of a button. I don't wanna to spend too much time going super in depth into this plugin, but if you got the money to spend, it's definitely worth it. These rules aren't written in stone, but they've helped me and I think they'll help you too. So with our first one, don't ever expand or compound your strokes in Illustrator. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So say we're in Illustrator and we have this black stroke and we want this red pattern to go inside of the stroke. So because it's a stroke in Illustrator, you're not able to use the shape builder tool or the pathfinder tool because technically no fills that are being registered for the pathfinder to cut out or the shape builder to cut out. So if we were just designing an Illustrator and not looking to animate it, you would just expand these and make it a fill and take it out with one of these tools. But if you decide to do this in Illustrator and you bring it into After Effects to animate, you run into something a little funky. By turning this stroke into a fill, we lose a lot of options under the shape layer. It now makes it incredibly more difficult to change the path of this fill than it would be to change it as a stroke. Something as simple as just changing the size of this box makes it difficult when it's not a stroke. So let's bring this back into Illustrator and try it as a stroke. Now, instead of using the destructive tool of expanding or compounding, we could just separate these layers and put a set mat on them or an alpha track mat so that I still have my pattern in my black stroke, but now I can use all the tools in the shape layer, like the taper and the stroke width. Going this route is just gonna make a quicker workflow and you have new room for possibilities of what you could create. Which leads us into our do part of this segment. Do expect to recreate assets in After Effects. So with this piece, I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. So I have this character sitting in the chest of this robot and I want his arm to move the steering wheel. But as you can see in the design, the arms are separated, which means it's gonna be a lot more difficult to animate these paths if I don't change it. So I'll show you exactly how I recreated it. So I grabbed my pen tool and I created a stroke to make his arm. I made sure to label the file correctly so I don't get confused. I changed the line cap to round and then I changed the color of the stroke to match his skin. Then I animated the path of the stroke to make it look like his arm was moving to turn the steering wheel. And because in the original graphic, his shirt is covering his arm, I made sure to put the arm stroke underneath the shirt. Next, I needed to make his arm look like it was inside the machine, like the original design. So I found the shape layer where this pink panel reside. I copied it and I pasted it in the shape layer where our character is and just put the pink panel above all of these layers. And to save myself from any confusion in the future, I'm going to parent this path to the original where this pink panel lives. So no matter how much I change this path on the original shape layer, it's always going to follow it. And just like before, if we move his arm, then we need to connect everything else. So if his arm moves, then so does his shirt and also his hand moving steering wheel. And for this design, everything has a stroke on it. And because we're already using a stroke, we can't put a stroke on top of a stroke. So what I do is I just duplicate the original arm, make sure to parent it to the original and make the stroke width bigger. Add a little bit of easy ease and there you go. And for another don't, don't forget to make sure that your strokes are all consistent. I've seen this in many designs where a designer goes to add a highlight or a shadow and some of the stroke is cut off. This also can happen when using blending modes in Illustrator and importing them into After Effects. So if you run into this issue, this is how you solve it. 
Here, I just imported my star from Illustrator, but when I converted it to a shape layer, the stroke is now cut off. To fix this, I'll go into my contents, duplicate the original shape, and put it above all of the groups that I want the stroke to cover. I'll turn off the fill, then I'll parent the duplicate to the original. I can't tell you how many times I've needed this, but I couldn't figure it out. So now that I know, I wanna show y'all so you don't have to go through the headache that I went through. And whenever I do that, I just like to put don't edit on top of it, just so it's a reminder to not touch that one. And lastly, do have fun. <laughs> Motion design is problem solving and keyframing and rendering, but it's also art and creation. So even though you run into your own unique problems each time. It's really fun and you gain the knowledge for the project next, which makes your workflow that much easier. And that's it. I hope this was super helpful for you guys. If you have any questions at all, definitely feel free to contact me. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials on motion design and visual effects. And make sure to click on that bell icon so you get notified for any future videos. Thanks so much, guys.